Good afternoon. This is Josh Robinson, your host. We are on a new episode of Poly Talks. Today, I am here with Duet Lee. How are you doing today, Duet Lee? Good, thank you. Good, good. Okay, I have a few questions for you today, Duet Lee. Mm-hmm. First question is, Duet, tell us a little history about yourself. Wonderful. Be happy to tell you. Um, well, I am a son of the soil, born here in the great city of Toronto. Uh, was raised uh, a good portion of my life in Buffalo, New York, where I attended high school um, and then traveled to Iowa for college to go chase quarterbacks uh-huh. in the Midwest. And um, went back to Buffalo, uh-huh. uh, started wor- working as an entrepreneur uh-huh. and uh, pursued my aspirations and dreams all the way back home to Toronto, uh-huh. um, where I've been for 12, 15 years now. Uh-huh. I, uh, I, as the business grew and, and as um, I grew a family, I really decided that Toronto is where I wanted to be, is where mm-hmm. I wanted to contribute and where I wanted to make a vast difference. Mm-hmm. Um, in 2010, mm-hmm. I decided to follow the tug of my heart and mm-hmm. the calling from God and that was to, and you know, the, the support of my friends and, and, and colleagues to get civically inclined and run for office, mayor that is. And uh, we achieved 1,699 votes uh-huh. in 2010, which has given us a tremendous uh, momentum going into the 2014 election. Okay, okay. Second question. As a candidate for mayor, what is your platform? Well, the platform, um, you'll notice a lot of platforms are still being worked out by a lot of candidates. Um, we've had the last four years to truly um, listen to the people, poll their thoughts, um, and make sure that what it is we stand for um, is the true is the true essence of what the people need. So um, I, I have a commitment. I, there's there's a few things that we'd like to achieve um, as a mayoral candidate, and that's to achieve uh, a sense of hope among Torontonians that we feel like is really missing. Um, and there's certain pockets of the community that have that felt totally neglected to the political process. Yeah. So we want to make sure as a platform we're standing on, we're making sure that people are engaged, mm-hmm. people are excited, and people are taking responsibility again for the rebuilding of their city. Um, there are things that concern me like um, housing issues mm-hmm. that we're going to fight for. There's things that concern me like um, crime, mm-hmm. all right? And what is the cause and the, and, the, and, the, and, the perp- and the reason behind crime? Right? It's not just putting people in jail, but why are people committing crimes? Right. Um, and most importantly, um, our campaign message is rise up and build. Mm-hmm. So we want to build relationships um, among the, the diverse communities here in the city of Toronto mm-hmm. and remove all the divisiveness that's taking place and allow us to truly, for once, stand together for one, as one. Okay. Third question. What is your message behind your campaign? Well, I think um, because we chose Rise Up and Build, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to just be committed to that concept. It's actually from the Bible. Okay. And uh, there's a little Bible verse, Nehemiah 2.18, that we put next to, the, to our campaign materials. Um, so our message is basically resembling the story mm-hmm. of Nehemiah, um, who had a good job. All right. He had a great job. Uh-huh. All right. He what he did was he served the king. So it was almost like a government job. Uh-huh. And he re- he he heard that the wall of Jerusalem was broken. Uh-huh. Right. And it broke his heart. Uh-huh. It broke his heart that his city was was a mockery around the world. It broke his heart that, his, that the people of the city um, felt dejected and um, didn't have the sense of pride that they once had. So he left his comfortable, cozy job. Uh-huh and decided to rally the people together to rebuild the wall. So um, I think that is the core message that we want to build with this campaign. Um, And something that, my friend, goes beyond the campaign. Uh And that's what makes this campaign so special, is that this is not just about electing me. This is about creating a movement of citizens that carries on beyond the election and, and, and fixing our city and standing up for those who are oppressed. Okay. All right, fourth question. What do you question. think about that? What do you think about that? Um, um, I think it's a good idea. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. As a person of color for mayor in the city of TDOT, what are some of the challenges you face? Well, I would like to think and I would like to say that um, anyone running for office, regardless of color, face a lot of the similar 
obstacles. Um, but they may be one particular thing that I'll have to address head on, and that is um, a base of, uh, of voters who don't have the confidence in the political system and don't have the sort of the, the experience in dealing in the political system. So for instance, um, and this is not really color based, but it's just, it's just what it is, you know. Um, there is a natural affinity and a, and a natural attraction when you see someone that looks like you and comes from the same neighborhood, you want to support that person. Well, you know, when I enter in those communities, you know, you hear a lot of negativity when it comes to voting. Um, and it comes to just being politically involved. So I believe that, um, you know, that our communities, yeah. communities of color, have, don't have a great track record in getting politically involved. Yeah. So when they see someone showing up, they immediately stereotype and box you in as being someone who wants to oppress and someone who doesn't want to um, help elevate. And um, so those are some of the things that I think um, we're having difficulty with. Um, but I will be remiss if I don't point out the fact that there is, um, there is racism that we deal with. And no matter what walk of life we decide to step into, um, there is things that we have to endorse. So as a person of color who, who's trying to go into a space where we're very rarely seen and very rarely heard from, you have to expect some kind of resilience um, and some, some kind of resistance, I should say, um, which requires resilience. And that's how you defeat, um, you know, restrictions is being resilient. So, um, you know, anything, anyone of color who wants to break color barriers, um, we have one man of color um, who is uh, sitting on council now. Um, the numbers of how many men and women have sat on council yeah. since Toronto was incorporated is, is in the very low double digits. Maybe I think it's 12 or 16, between 12 and 16. So it's very low numbers. So we're, um, this is groundbreaking things we're doing. And um, I'm prepared for any kind of um, stereotyping yeah. um, that I may receive. Okay. My bet. Okay. Um, what is that button that you're wearing there? Oh, man, thank you very much for pointing that out, yeah. uh, Joshua. Um, this actually button is the reason why I'm in pink. Mm -hmm. I only wear pink on very, very special occasions, mm -hmm. all right? And uh, this is a very special occasion. So um, there's an organization called JA Nursing mm -hmm. um, that has started a, um, an outreach and, and, and a promotion campaign for, called Get Pinked. And uh, it's to create funds and awareness for the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation. And so she has worked tirelessly going around the community and um, seeking support from members of the community. So I'm proud to be one of those members. And the truth is, that's what the whole purpose of the campaign is, is to not only um, talk about the issues and the true pain of the people, um, but it's also, and the successes of the people, but it's to shed and share the spotlight with very important initiatives that will benefit the community as a whole. So thank you for pointing that out. No and, problem, no problem. Okay. And thank you for having me on the show. I'll tell you what, this facility is wonderful. Um, I run a, a media company, and, uh, and we really do enjoy what young people bring to the table. Anytime we uh, bring in interns or have someone actually work for us during the summer, um, they bring a great youth, youthfulness yeah. and, uh, and innovation that has helped us really um, meet new markets, introduce our products to new markets, and, uh, and be more competitive. So I think the youth have a lot to offer. And, um, and I hope that this institution here continues to exist, and I'll do everything I can to make sure that it, it continues to grow up. Thank you for joining our broadcast, Do It Need a Third. This is your host, Joshua Robinson. Until next time, I will see you again on Poly Talks.